Hello and welcome to the Designers Learning jQuery podcast. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about jQuery selectors. If you're not sure what a jQuery selector is, well, often the first step in writing some jQuery is to select the elements on the page that you'd like to work with, and we do that by using jQuery selectors. jQuery borrows many of its selectors from CSS, so a lot of the code that we look at today should look very familiar to you. We're going to get started by looking at a project, which is just like the one that we set up last time. So we have the same files and folder structure that we set up last time. And I'm just going to open up our scripts.js file where I'll be typing out the example code. Now, what I'll be typing in this file today is not technically correct JavaScript, but I did just want to demo the different selectors available to you. First up, we have the ID selector. And we know that if we have an element on the page with an ID of nav, we could select that in CSS just like that and open our curly brackets and type in all of the CSS styles that would apply to that element. That selector in jQuery is very similar. We use a dollar sign, then opening parentheses, and then quotes, which can be single or double quotes. It is a matter of personal preference and then that same CSS selector. So that's how we'd select the element on the page with an ID of nav in jQuery. We can also select elements with CSS class names, and that looks very similar to how it does in CSS. So dot content will select all of the elements on a page with a class of content. In addition to IDs and classes, we can also select elements by their tag or element name. So for example, this selector would select all of the paragraphs on the page. Well, this selector would select all of the divs on the page. In addition to those selectors, we also have the universal selector available to us, which probably looks familiar to you from CSS, just the star selector. And that'll select all of the elements on the page. And just like in CSS, we can also use assorted attribute selectors for getting to certain elements. So for example, if I wanted to select all of the images on the page that had a title attribute, my selector would look like that. And we can take attribute selectors one step further. If I wanted to select all of the images that not only had a title tag, but had a title tag equal to Paris, my selector would look like that. Attribute selectors do get quite complex, and you can dig into those a little bit more by looking at the jQuery documentation. In addition to these selectors we've covered so far, we also have hierarchy selectors available to us. And these get used all the time in CSS. So for example, if I wanted to select all of the links inside the element with an ID of nav, my selector would look like that. If I wanted to select all of the paragraphs inside of a container with an ID of main, my selector would look like that. We also have the direct descendant selector available to us, which we use relatively frequently in CSS. If I wanted to select only paragraphs that were direct descendants of the container with an ID of main, my selector would look like this. So far, all of the selectors that we've looked at have been borrowed directly from CSS and are the exact same selectors. But in addition to those, jQuery also makes some special additional selectors available to us. So for example, we have some selectors available around visibility. And those look like pseudo selectors. So we put a colon in front of them. And we have hidden and its partner selector, visible. So hidden will select all of the elements on the page that happen to be hidden, whether those were hidden with CSS or with JavaScript. And visible will select all of the elements on the page that happen to be visible. These two selectors can be very handy if you're working on tabs or if you're working on a slideshow or any other kind of widget on a page that involves showing or hiding different bits of content. You can very easily select all of the elements that are visible or all of the elements that are hidden at any point in time. In addition to those, we also have special selectors available for us just for form elements. For many form elements, we could use attribute selectors. So for example, if I wanted to get all of the checkboxes on the page, I could do this and select those by the type attribute equal to checkbox. Like that. But jQuery actually provides a shortcut to us and those again look like pseudo class selectors. So I could just type checkbox. 
and that will select all of the elements of type checkbox on the page and I don't need to type out this longer attribute selector. Likewise, I have a very similar selector that will select all of the radio buttons on the page. If I were interested in getting just the radio buttons or checkbox items that were checked, I can do that with the checked selector, just like that. In addition to those, we also have jQuery form selectors for all different types of form elements. So for example, the file selector will get just input of type file and the submit selector will get just inputs of type submit. Those are all of the jQuery selectors that we're going to cover today. As I mentioned, these are just a tiny subset of all of the possibilities that are open to you, but these are by far the most common selectors that are used in jQuery and will do for you just fine in probably 90 to 95% of cases. If you are interested in digging into those a little further and learning more about the options available to you, you can look in the jQuery documentation at api.jquery.com or you can check out the book Instant jQuery Selectors. Both those sources will dig into every possible selector available to you in jQuery. Thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video and would like to learn more about jQuery, pick up a copy of my book, jQuery for Designers, available now.